our project uh, is uh, one of the largest in uh, in open source software in general um, um the let's say that the open source environment has changed quite substantially over the last 10 years uh, and has changed over the last 20 since uh, open office was launched um around the turn of the century uh, the open source software was probably uh, limited to uh, a, a small uh, uh, niche of uh, technical people that were able to manage the software and were able to install the software was not always uh, as easy as it is today in 20 years the situation has changed completely and has evolved uh, almost every year since then uh, let's look at some numbers uh, i will go quickly through them uh, but the reality is that today uh, we are in a market uh, uh, which is uh, around 25 billion dollars in 2021 actually uh, the market uh, has uh, decreased, it was uh, around $30 billion in 2010. It has decreased uh, for five years and then uh, it's increasing back. So um, now it, it went down to around $18 billion, so 60% um, uh, of the original uh, market. And it's going back to $30 billion in 2025. This is because uh, uh, something has happened. Uh, uh, people uh, with uh, uh, a rivalry internet was uh, forecasting the death of um, productivity. Everything uh, would have been online and everything would have been on smartphones and tablets, but the reality is that this uh, didn't happen. Of course, in 2020, the market was hit by the pandemic, but we can say that that 2% of growth was just from open source software. And uh, from 2021 to 2025, uh, the, the growth is around 5% is steady year over year. In this market, as I said, uh, we uh, are uh, um, estimated to have uh, uh, around, open source is estimated to have around uh, 16, uh, 17, 18 percent uh, market share. This is uh, by analysts. But what uh, we have got from uh, Microsoft recently uh we we have been talking with microsoft to, to have uh, libreoffice uh, in the next iteration of uh, the windows uh, store uh, is that libreoffice uh, is uh, probably the most requested open source application by windows 10 users uh, so microsoft this uh, uh makes uh, this this has two consequences the first one is that microsoft is keen about having uh, libreoffice in uh, in the windows store independently from the fact that libreoffice may be a competitor of microsoft office and uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, the project uh, although uh it could everything could be done better uh, has grown uh, in a rather good way during the last 10 years. So just to, to uh, recall a little bit uh, very quickly uh, our model, when we started, we the LibreOffice was a, a, a fork or a spin-off, if you prefer, from OpenOffice.org. And uh, one of the, uh, the, the, let's call issue, but let's, one of the fact that we wanted to avoid was to have a single company sponsoring the product. So we, uh, we tried to design uh, our uh, statutes in a way that was making it difficult for a single company 
to control the product the project and uh, on the contrary we wanted to have uh, an ecosystem of companies that were contributing to LibreOffice. Uh, this has happened, as of course, has not happened as designed, because uh, we we were not able to influence completely the situation around us. But the reality is that after ten years, uh, we have a strong community, and we have a strong ecosystem. Um, to grow to for the next ten years. What we need to do is to strengthen the community and is to strengthen the ecosystem. If we don't uh, make the community and the ecosystem stronger, the risk is that the, the, the project is not growing uh, in the right way as it did during the last 10 years. As I said, everything can happen in a probably in a better way. Uh, we all know we all have one or a couple or three or maybe more things that we would have done in a different way. We should always remember that uh, that a, a project structured as the LibreOffice project. So our model of not having a single entity at the helm, of course, uh, uh, makes it um, a request to find uh, uh, a balance between the needs of the, the, the community and the needs of the ecosystem. Um, we cannot have uh, the community uh winning on every decision we cannot have the ecosystem winning on every decision the ideal uh situation would be to find uh, a common agreement on each uh, uh decision this is not unfortunately this is not always possible so i think we have to be patient and find a way of working together even in uh, when the, the the discussion seems too strong and seems not to have an end uh life cycle of office suites uh our market is a mature market uh the reality is that although mature will not decline this uh, is clear the last 10 years have made it clear that desktop productivity and for desktop productivity i say productivity on something which is uh, in front of you not just uh, on your desktop so it can be uh, a desktop computer can be a laptop can be a, a, a tablet can be the cloud which is accessed by a desktop a cloud a tablet a cloud and so on so uh, it's important that we remember that desktop productivity, it's here to stay, will change, but it will not disappear. And what is important to remember is that the, the attention for digital sovereignty will definitely give uh, new life to office suites and give new life uh, to open source office suites because proprietary office suites are not born uh, to be compliant to digital sovereignty so which are the stakeholders community members uh, every community member has a very high personal involvement because it's volunteering and has a very high project value because it's the project is contributing to uh, of course uh, uh, volunteering uh, uh, or uh, in some cases is paid to work on on the project users do not have personal involvement the fro the product is free and they don't see the product as to have a huge value the office suites are a commodity and this is a fact it's the fact that office suites are a commodity doesn't take away value from LibreOffice is a commodity because it's on every desktop. It's something that everyone is more or less capable of using it. 
some numbers about development. Um, I've already uh, provided these numbers, so I think uh, everyone knows that. I think uh, uh, the balance between uh, ecosystem companies and volunteers is not a bad balance because, of course, uh, the 28 percent and probably in some cases can be more from volunteers is uh, extremely important. Key activities like uh, uh, localization, documentation, uh, quality assurance, uh, user interface. Uh, what is unbalanced, unfortunately, are contributions uh, inter which are economic, and not only economic, but let's say contributions from users. If we look at donation numbers, 90% are from individuals and 10% from small businesses. There's no, no donation from uh, large companies, maybe one, maybe two per year, but not visible on the, in comparison to the thousands of donations of, uh, of individuals. And uh, based on estimates, so based on estimates, which are based on numbers, less than 5% of LibreOffice enterprise users, and with enterprise, I say, companies, organizations that are using LibreOffice, uh, they only a few of them contribute to the project. And of course, uh, if we look at the market, uh, $25 billion, and think that many, many, the majority of our users uh, in enterprises are uh, not giving back anything, there is uh, something which is not working in a, the, the, the it's unbalanced we should educate enterprise users to contribute in some way they can uh, of course they can put money on the table they can buy an lts version they can uh, uh, pay a developer to develop a feature they can uh, um, sponsor the development or a specific uh, group of features, they can pay for support, so solve bugs. It, and of course, a, a, a bug that is solved is, in fact, is a, is a, is a good feature that is added. So uh, we should educate these users uh, to, to contribute more to LibreOffice. It is true that uh, the, the advantage goes first to ecosystem companies, but if we think that ecosystem companies are, uh, what, are what they are developing is uh, on the uh, LibreOffice master repository, then uh, is uh, LibreOffice, is the LibreOffice project that has an advantage in uh, uh, getting this kind of contribution from uh, uh, enterprise users. Uh, this is not this issue is not uh, unique to LibreOffice. There have been uh, in the last ten years there have been uh, several uh, episodes that uh, confirm this. The in 2014, the discovery of the Artbleed bug uh, revealed that a uh, such a strategic software was in fact maintained by two people and that was not the right thing to do in 2016 nadia Ekbal, a, a researcher published the paper roads and bridges the unseen labor behind our digital infrastructure which is extremely interesting and covers exactly what the uh, open source communities are doing uh, to improve the, the technology infrastructure. And in 2019, Dries Buitert is the Drupal guy, published the blog post, Balancing uh, Makers and Takers to Scale and Sustain Open Source. So there, uh, there is a debate on that. Uh, if we look at what we are doing, what we have designed, uh, the Document Foundation is part of this debate. This uh, is what I said before. Uh, LibreOffice, uh, as a recognized brand name, uh, 
after 10 years, we are recognized as a large project. And this large project, as volunteers, as ecosystem companies, they all are part of the community. There is a large overlap in activities between volunteers and ecosystem companies. We now have a, a logo for it. We, are a lo we have a logo that is, uh, will be used more and more to have uh, the LibreOffice ecosystem being recognized as a kind of entity behind the LibreOffice project, uh, part of the, the LibreOffice project, part of the LibreOffice community. We, we have to make uh, enterprise users aware that by contributing a little bit of what they save, but by not using uh, uh, proprietary software, makes uh, LibreOffice stronger, probably makes LibreOffice closer to what they expect from a software. So it's that they, they would pay uh, really a, a percentage, a fraction of what they were paying with a with proprietary licenses, but in return, to they will get a, a software which uh, is probably going to uh, evolve faster and evolve uh, closer to to their expectation. If we look at how the the LibreOffice ecosystem has started, um, this exactly this was was what happened during the first four years. So the, 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 the ecosystem companies, there, were, there was a, a growing number of ecosystem companies and the number of paid developers went up from 20 to 60, around 60. Uh, and uh, so it, it was possible, for instance, to do the refactoring of the code, to do some uh, key um, operations to, to, get, to make LibreOffice what it is today. Then we started losing several ecosystem companies and the number of paid developers has reduced to from 60 to around 40. And now it's stable, but of course, uh, we should try to grow it back to 60 and possibly even to a larger number. Uh, the community is growing. The ecosystem is not growing as much as the community. So we need to balance the two. Sometimes the relationship between ecosystem and community are not ideal. And I think they are not ideal uh, because there is a, a lack, a partial lack of understanding of each other objectives and realities. Uh, and of course, a growing number of community members is not aware of the roots of the project because they are coming uh, 10 years, five, seven, 10 years later. And uh, the fact that they don't know, they don't have a solid background in, uh, in the root of the project can uh, create frictions. As I said, we, we must work together and develop a new strategy for the next decade, supporting the growth of the project, so supporting each other. The ecosystem needs the community. The community needs the ecosystem. We cannot do it by ourselves. It's this is clear. This should be clear for everyone. So our project has a very good positioning uh, in the free open source environment. Uh, the software is available possibly for every platform. We have native support of the best standard document format, a best-in-class support of Microsoft Office documents. We support more legacy proprietary format than any other software. So this makes LibreOffice the only real alternative to Microsoft Office. And probably this is what Microsoft knows. And on the uh, and and uh, the fact that they won't really want us to be on the Windows 11 uh, um, store 
is a is a demonstration of this we are really in the at the crossroad of many open source uh, projects because we have uh, companies that are uh, supporting us uh, we 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 provide uh, we we are between communities users uh, uh, we we reflect what traditional software companies are doing we are really in at the crossroads or in the middle if you prefer of the open source environment uh, our unique selling proposition uh, best open source office suite ever and this uh, is absolutely uncontroversial um, there's no other open source software and open source office suite capable of doing uh, what LibreOffice is doing and and backed by a community such as the LibreOffice community and uh, and an ecosystem such as the uh, LibreOffice ecosystem. Uh, we we provide the best of open source. We provide professional support. Uh, we provide uh, professional consultancy. So it's a complete project. We will improve it in the next few years but we are already starting from a very solid office solid base in the future we we have to leverage our brand this is one of the reason why now we have uh, technology and ecosystem uh, logos uh, visual logos will help us in being recognized in uh, having ecosystem companies recognize in having uh, product based on LibreOffice technology being recognized. It will help us in growing the awareness around LibreOffice. We have to educate users. We have to educate individuals, but we have to educate especially organizations about the value of a self-sustaining free open source software project. And we have to find a balance between the free product and the enterprise supported product. Uh, we, we have a mission, which is to bring uh, free software to uh, the world. Uh, but of course, in some cases, uh, we have to be careful where uh, our mission ends uh, and the opportunity for the ecosystem company starts let's discuss it do not uh, stand uh, as wall against wall that's not bringing any value to anyone we have to win uh, as much as everyone else has to win around libreoffice we have to underline the peculiarities of the libreoffice project it's really unique uh, have you heard about an only office project uh, I don't think so. It's not a real project. It's a company uh, releasing an open core product. Uh, so in the next 10 years, let's use the LibreOffice technology ingredient brand. It's important. We should all use that, that uh, concept. Uh, it's also a concept that makes LibreOffice stronger. Reduce the perception that the Document Foundation is a software vendor because the people will uh, at attach to the software vendor concept uh, the service uh, uh, support and other services that we are not able to provide. We should communicate with a coordinated strategy to make it easier for the user to understand which is the best LibreOffice version for their needs. And of course, we started to differentiate the LibreOffice desktop. We, we added the community tag uh, to uh, the LibreOffice uh, version released by the Document Foundation. It is clear, it's supported by volunteers. We have to make it clear what supported by volunteers mean, because it's not the same as supported by professionals. Volunteers 
a volunteer can be as professional as anyone in terms of uh, quality, but is not available 24 hours by seven every day, is not available according to a service level agreement. So if you need support uh, on a weekend, if you need support uh, at nine o'clock in the evening, it's probably better that you look for professional support. You pay something and you have what you what you are looking for. It's useless to send email or to send email like, uh, uh, I've, did you receive my email? I've sent it four hours ago, no one has answered. Uh, this is something that happens. Uh, sorry, it's not the way you should address volunteers. And uh, we have a LibreOffice Enterprise. This is not a product, it's a, it's a kind of umbrella name from ecosystem companies. It's professionally supported, suggested for production environments in enterprises and large organizations. This, uh, we should be proud of having uh, an offer which is uh, free for uh, uh, the majority of people and uh, professionally supported for the people that need professional support because they deploy LibreOffice is an environment in an environment where production is important, where uh, you use the software to make money. You use the software to support a business. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, many universities. Of course, universities are a, a composite environment. There are universities uh, in many countries that do not have a lot of money. There are universities that have a huge amount of money. So, of course, we have to be careful of there. Governments, enterprises. So we have to be careful about uh, uh, when, when we look at, this, uh, at these users, we have to be careful to see and decide which one uh, has the right of getting the free version and which one uh, has the opportunity of paying uh, for the enterprise version. So sorry, uh, sorry, Italo, last minute started. Yeah, sure, oh. I know. Uh, so LibreOffice Enterprise, as I said, is not the name of a new product, uh, but is uh, the family name uh, for the product provided by ecosystem companies. Uh, there are slides that I've started to make available. Please use them. If the slides do not reflect what you are looking for, write me. We will try together to produce a, a good slide deck for your needs. And uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, and you will hear me again on this topic many times in the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Italo, for this interesting insight.